All right. Hello, Am. Welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Kurt Phillip, who is over in London in the UK. How are you doing, Kurt? Doing well, mate. Doing well. How about yourself? Yeah, yeah, very good. And Kurt is the founder and CEO of Convertica. Uh, he directs the company, ensures that the company continues to deliver the best results for its clients. Uh, and you're working at the forefront of CRO technology. And for those of the uninitiated, that's conversion rate optimization. So, um, Kurt, before we get into uh, into the whole discussion, um, just baseline this uh, CRO technology and the whole market segment for anybody who may not be familiar with it. Yeah, sure. So, so in this day and age, it's very easy for anyone to start a website. So anyone can get on Shopify, anyone can get on WordPress and start a, a fully functioning website without any marketing or sales knowledge. So what we bring to the table is we help to streamline and optimize using a bunch of techniques, uh, these businesses to, to create more sales. So most uh, you're seeing a lot of people right now with no, no knowledge or background in marketing, making six, seven figure businesses um, quite easily these days. Um, and then we come in and, and optimize them further to make sure that they're, they're functioning in the best way possible. Excellent. So what are some of the things that uh, that you do to help with uh, conversion rate optimization? Well, the, the core the core functionality that we provide is A-B testing. So we'll test an optimized version against an original version and see what creates more, more sales, essentially. Um, and how we do this is, I mean, we've worked with over 700 clients. So we have a lot of techniques that we know work. So when we go and, and work with uh, a new website, we'll add a lot of trust, add credibility, you know, adding testimonials in, in, a, in a, a good location that can be seen and read and, and related to, making sure the website functions properly, especially on mobile. A lot of, because websites are designed on desktop, they're not really optimized for mobile. So we'll go and, and do a lot of uh, techniques to streamline that. Namely, for example, add to cart buttons that are always floating on uh, on mobile so that they're always visible um, right right above the thumb is, is one thing we test quite often that works well. So a lot of little te techniques like this that uh, just help the website, especially if it's an e-commerce website to to make it easier for, for users to purchase, just like Amazon. So. Yeah, because um, let's face it, as you said, I mean, a lot of people start sites and businesses and, and A-B testing, let's face it, it's, it's time consuming. So having somebody help you with that is, is, uh, is a very positive thing because it's not something that comes naturally to other people, to be honest. Even people who've been in marketing for a while still aren't that great at A-B testing. There's a lot of moving parts. There's a lot of moving parts from redesign to testing to then interpreting the data to rolling out the changes and making sure they don't break the website. And then if you've got three or four tests running at the same time, being able to manage them all. So that's why we just focus on that. We don't do any other type of digital marketing. It's just uh, A-B testing and conversion optimization because it, it takes a lot of work. So Yeah. And, and just a, a time frame because I think that's the other part when people come to test things, they get a little impatient. Um, mm -hmm. So when you start doing proper, proper testing like this, like over what kind of period do you tend to uh, measure things? We have a pretty strict criteria on what type of sites we work with in terms of how much traffic, how much visitors mm -hmm. come to the website. So you need sort of between two and 10,000 views to a split test in order to get a result on the minimum side. Um, so that will generally take, obviously depends on the site, depends on how much traffic mm -hmm. coming to your site, but most of our clients between three and three and five weeks will be able to get a test result. So um, you've got to have a lot of patience too with it, obviously in that case. Yeah. And obviously, I mean, when you test different variables, I mean, you can't test, you can't test multiple variables at, at one time. So you've got to, um, you know, do it, do it in chunks, right? Uh, you can, you can, it's called multivariate testing where you can, where you can test multiple things at a time that requires hundreds of thousands of visitors to get that result because mm -hmm. there's so many variables that could happen to create the outcome. But generally, yeah, 99% of our clients, we just do straight up AB testing with one variable and split test that in isolation until we get the result. 
So what are some of the what are some of the <clears throat> mistakes you think people make when they when they set up their their sites initially that uh, that they could avoid and it would help them uh, when they come to do proper testing and optimization? It's not so much about what mistakes people are making. It's more of how the industry has evolved in terms of mm. Shopify and WordPress have evolved and been created to make it easy for business owners to create a website. So when they're developing Shopify and so on, it's made in terms of how easy is it for the user to make a website, not how to, I mean, they, a lot of them do have core CRO built in on a basic level, but when you, when you can allow someone to edit every area of the website, it's, it's going to get messed up a lot, you know? So we see it a lot when, because developers aren't necessarily marketers, they have a different sort of headspace they work in. Um, so an example is when, when you click the add to cart button and nothing happens and there's, and then the cart, the cart has a little one next to it, but there's no indication of what the user should do next. That's one we see all the time on huge websites. So you want to always let the know, let the user know what the next step is. And that's as easy as putting in like uh, when they click add to cart, giving them an option to check out or continue shopping, which, you know, Amazon does is a great example of conversion optimization done well um so yeah it's more of a an industry issue well, it's not so much an issue but it's that's why we exist that's why our service exists because it's uh it's so easy to make a website now yeah no no ab absolutely it is and and obviously then uh you know because it's been very much made self-service and stuff and as you said it's been made very easy people assume every part of it is going to be easy so obviously uh you know it's good business for people like you because uh, they discovered there's a lot more there's a lot more to it uh, mm -hmm. than that and so um, what, what are where where is this where is this headed do you think because i mean the rapid changes in 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 technology and the rapid changes in in algorithms and everything i mean how do you keep ahead of things and where do you see things going it's a good that's a good question um to a degree ai will help i think assist with a lot of decision making process because it's a create a lot of creative uh, input needed in the design process. I don't think it's going to be, it's going to be some time before AI can take care of that. In in my opinion, for what I can see, like at least for the next 10 years, who knows when quantum computing kicks in, it will change everything. But um, yeah, I think it's going to, there's, there's a few smaller services out there at the moment that are using AI to split test. They, from our from what we've seen, they don't really get that great results. They get some smaller, they can get some small increases, but, but yeah, it's, uh, I think it's still going to need, it's like content writing, right? There's mm -hmm. content writing being done by AI and bots at the moment, and it will get good eventually. Of course, with more data, it will improve and get good, just like Google Translate did, but it's still not quite there because you have to, okay, you might be able to write small blocks of text, but you're not going to be able to write a novel that emotionally interacts with the, with, the, with the human intellect and like these multiple storylines, it's going to take some time and it will get there. It absolutely will get there with enough development, but, but yeah, there's still going to be some time before, before the algorithms yeah. can own this one. Yeah. It's a scary thought to think that we'd be reading stuff written by AI one day, but uh, well, you knows? already are. I can guarantee it. A lot of it. You already are. You already are. No. But it's, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, reading, reading like big opus, a big opus written by AI. Um, so, um, so what are some of the things, what are some of the advice you would give to people when they're setting up a business or starting a business or getting, mm -hmm. getting their e-commerce site mm -hmm. or their website up? What, what are some of the, what are some of the starting points and what are some of the things they should be looking out for? I think I get asked this question a lot when I'm on podcasts and it's, it's, I think people want an easy answer, but the easy, the, the best way when you're starting out, is to get credibility and trust. Those are the two things because people make decisions within a split second when they jump on your website if they're going to buy from you or not, and if you're credible and if you, your website's credible. So the best way to do it is is reviews and case studies always, and making them visible everywhere. If you look at our homepage, we have nothing but all over our homepage, and it works really well. We've split tested it a lot, and it works really well. We have we have what we do. We have a a free uh, lead magnet to give people a free audit. Then we have who we've worked with, uh, 
10 reviews or so, three case studies and a bit more what we do, then three more case studies. And it just builds that trust and credibility so that the person goes, you know what, these guys are right. Then we have a link over to Trustpilot where we have all our reviews and they and it it reinforces the trust because people are buying from someone they don't know or who they've met. And they Amazon is obviously an easy choice mm-hmm. because they've people purchase off them all the time. It turns up the next day. How can you beat that? So in order for you, a more boutique store that is starting out selling whatever item it is you want to sell, you also need to build that credibility and trust with reviews and and uh, and case studies, depending if you're a service, obviously case studies, but case studies and video reviews also work really well for, for businesses to gain gain credibility because that'll be the fastest way for you to really explode uh, with sales. And that could just mean giving your product to family and friends and getting them to review your products while they hold it in their hand and things like this. Like people like genuine, genuine reviews, but good old text uh, testimonials work really well too. Better than nothing anyway. Yeah, um, absolutely. And uh, so, so basically, what you're saying though is that it's 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 optimal if you invest the time upfront, right, to maybe gather some testimonials, gather some customer reviews, do all of this work, so that when you go out, you can go out with credibility from the get go, as opposed to you know just go out with something bland and hope hope for the best. Hundred percent. So that's what exactly what I did when I started Convertica was I went to three or four of the industry leaders in the, in the industry that I wanted to market to and did mm-hmm. conversion rate optimization for them for free. And the payment was that we do a case study on their website, which builds even more trust because it's not a case study on my own website and I can manipulate the story and whatever. It, it means that it's vouched by them. It's written by them. And it was even more, more credibility building. Um, and that's what we do all the time now for, for high, like for, for guys that, we know we can leverage. We just uh, do work for free for them. And, and if you've got a service, that's the best way to do it. Especially if you've got a, an online service, go out there, find three, four, five companies to do your service for free in exchange for a case study testimonial review and then plaster that everywhere all over your site. It'll do wonders for your, your conversion rate there. Yeah, no, I, I think that's a great idea. And I, and I think, uh, again, I mean, a great takeaway for people is to put in that work up front. It's like anything else. The, the more prep work you put in up front, the, the higher the quality that prep work is, the better the result is going to be when you when you go and launch um, mm-hmm. out to the public. Um, so so what are what are some other things that you think that people should be uh, considering? So there's the trust factor. Uh, and you mentioned, you know, review sites. I mean, there's a lot of review sites around right now and and that. Uh, so uh, where do you see that part, the third party review site part going? Because as I said, like there's a lot of them out there and there seems to be more mm-hmm. coming on stream all the time. And do we reach a point where maybe, you know, they're not as effective as they used to be just because there's so many of them? I think just pick one. I mean, yeah. it doesn't really matter. Some people use clutch.co, some people use Trustpilot, some people use Google reviews. What's worked really well for us, especially being in the UK, and, and I mean, most of our clients are in the US and it works well, mm-hmm. is Trustpilot, the green stars, the, you know, it seems to have a more credible, uh, credible backing behind it. But, you know, Trustpilot reviews and audits uh, a lot of their reviews too. So it's not like Google reviews that they don't really do too mm-hmm. much. Anyone, I know tons of my friends who um, who have had competitors come in and just leave negative reviews. One star, this product sucks or whatever, just because anyone can do it. Whereas on Trustpilot, if you think a review is fake and someone leaves a one star review, you can contact Trustpilot and go, can you just double check um, who this client is and, and where they're from when they used our service? And if they can't back up and show proof that they work with you. They remove the review. And we've had that happen a couple of times, um, sadly. Um, but because if they haven't worked with you and they can't show proof, email dialogue, receipts, invoices, whatever, then they actually remove the review. So it's much much more credible than, say, Google reviews, which I know personally don't get audited at all because they're so huge. Yeah, and I think that's a really good point for people as well. So be careful of the of the review site that you choose to to promote on your site and make sure it's one like a, uh, like you just said, like Trustpilot mm-hmm. that will actually audit the reviews. I um, mean, there are other sites too that will audit the reviews and there's some, as mm-hmm. you said, that won't. So you got to be careful what you choose. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly it. 
Mm -hmm. And uh, and apart from apart from testimonials uh, and review sites, uh, what 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 are some of the other credibility building elements that you should be looking for? So think, you got to think on the psychology of users on your website. When they and I'm using e-commerce as an example here because yeah. that's definitely the most widespread uh, type of monetization method out there. Um, what's the next thing that pops into people's head when they're looking to buy from you? Is it shipping? Is it returns policies? Is it all, all these type of things that you got to think of the insecurity they're going to be feeling when they go to purchase, especially if your products are high ticket. Like you got to think about maybe complaints you've had, maybe issues you've had with, with past clients and then something to counter that. So if, if it's, if people have been worried in your industry about shipping being slow, have a shipping, a shipping, uh, like, two day shipping or most of items leave within one day and, and put that near the add to cart button. Is it, is it a returns policy? You know, having all these evident and clear near the, near the add to cart button, because that's where the decision gets made. So having these, having all these very, very clear uh, near it. And again, that's just trust and credibility um, because at every stage of, even after they've clicked the add to cart and they go to cart or they go to the checkout, you also need to re, show these images again and re-show these testimonials to keep them secure all the way through the checkout so that they don't feel that feeling of uh this doesn't feel too right and then leave so um so yeah having that making sure that those are clear and just making sure your site is easy to use a, a, a good service i like to use on i've used on my own businesses e-commerce business in the past is getting user testing on um, getting users on the website and getting them to complete a goal. So I think usertesting.net is a service now and there's a bunch of them where you can pay for 50 people to use your website and give feedback on it. So you go on and you say, I want you to buy two pairs of black socks and check out with a credit card. And then obviously they don't go all the way through to paying, but they go through, they have to try and find the socks. They have to go all the way through the process. And it, you'll be amazed by the insights you get that you would have never seen before that. You're like, of course, they couldn't even see the add to cart button or they didn't even know what to do next. And then a lot of them narrate what they're thinking as they go through. So the, the sort of insights you get from this is huge, especially if you're a startup, because when you're building your website, you think it's the best thing in the world and you're very blind to... <laughs> The reality of the situation from the user's perspective and especially like i said on mobile too mobile is a huge killer especially now that mm -hmm. you know, 70 80 percent of a lot of websites traffic is on mobile and um, getting these user testing and these user sites uh, on there and giving you the feedback will, uh, will sort out a lot of headaches yeah, because it's it's amazing, Curtis, because, yeah, you're correct. I mean, when we build our own things, we get very involved in it. But the other thing that often happens to us, which is also quite credible, is we we forget that we're we're buyers ourselves. Right. So we sort of take that hat off and we just put our let's build this. And so actually getting user feedback, trying to put yourself in the in the shoes of the person who's actually buying and interacting with the website. I mean, I think I think we all fall down on that, uh, you know, often. So I think the leveraging third parties is always a good thing to get that validation because we're kind of our own worst enemies. Yeah, exactly. And you just don't see something sometimes because maybe you're on a MacBook 13 inch mm -hmm. screen, but what happens on, I don't know, an older demographic that maybe has an old Windows PC that's the screen resolution is different. Can they even see the add to cart button? Is it rendering properly on, on older browsers and all these type of things that especially uh, that are just really important to get right from the start. If you're starting a new business, like, if you do, you know, what we just talked about with the user testing, if you get reviews, maybe some case studies of people using your product or service, like you're going to be ahead of 99% of, uh, of businesses because those things are what makes a difference to, to getting set up longer term. So. Yeah, listen, thanks so much, uh, Kurt. This is great advice, great takeaways from every, for everybody. Uh, Kurt, all of Kurt's information is going to be below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about you and Convertica. Yeah, sure. So Convertica, I started the company about four years ago, um, and it was mainly due to a, a, most of the conversion optimization companies were targeted at, at 
larger businesses, eight figure businesses. So we sort of started with the small and medium sized businesses and full done for you. So we do everything from the redesigns, split testing, all the way through to the coding and integration for the split test. Um, and yeah, you can find out uh, a lot more about our business at convertica.org. So. Yeah. Well, listen, then. Thanks again, Kurt. It's, it's fascinating stuff. And I would uh, encourage people to check out uh, Convertica, check out the work that they do. Uh, it's always good to give yourself as many advantages as you can, particularly if, if you're in a startup position. Uh, my name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine, Pipeliner CRM. See you all for another interview really soon. Thank you.